Okay, YouTube. Today we're sharing a really big secret, and that's how to can tamales. Some of you have probably never heard of canning tamales. Well, it's really super easy. If you can make tamales, you can can tamales. We'll list the recipe below of how to put the tamales together. I'll give you a little hint on some tips, and these will taste great. If you've never made tamales before, these are really easy. First, we're going to start by using our Instant Pot to put our corn husk down in. We're going to put hot water over them, put a plate on top of them, and put them in our Instant Pot and let it keep them warm. That'll start uh, getting your corn husk soft. We're going to add two pounds of ground meat. We'll add a little bit of olive oil because this meat is super lean so we can get it frying because we do want to brown it. When you brown the meat, you're adding a lot of flavor. I'm going to add a little water to it to help break the meat up so it becomes a little smaller while you're trying to cook it. Adding water will help break the meat up to where it's going to fry in smaller pieces. Because we're not going to put this through a grinder or anything, we're just using ground hamburger meat today. We are going to work on some seasonings to make sure we've got your tamale seasoned correctly. We're going to work on some seasonings that we'll add to it. Um, I did purchase what is called Masa Seasoning Mix. It's a Fiesta brand. came actually in a little bag and I got it actually at Walmart. And it really has a good flavor to it. So I put it in a container and it's called Tamale Masa Seasoning. We're going to use it in the Masa, but we're all going to use, also going to use it in our hamburger mix. Then we're going to make up our own um, seasoned mix using paprika, black pepper, chili powder, onion powder, garlic powder, and salt. It's always important to be sure you add plenty of flavor into your, your meals. When you can make things separate like this that you're going to put together, take the time to taste it and see what it needs. You don't want it lacking salt or pepper or I mean, tamales are, it's Mexican food, so you want it to taste like Mexican food. We're going to keep working with this ground meat to get it kind of chopped up kind of small. This is a wooden spoon, a flat wooden spoon, so we can help break it up. If we run out of water, you're going to add a little bit more water to it. We're going to be using uh, broth to wet our masa with, and I actually had some uh, chicken broth in the refrigerator already that let set overnight so we get all the fat out of it. Uh, let's make up our seasoning mix to add into our hamburger meat. We're going to start with a teaspoon of garlic powder. We're not going to use all this. You're going to probably need a little jar or a baggie to put it in. Or you could actually break it down to about a half a teaspoon of each. Put a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of chili powder, We're going to put a teaspoon of each of the seasonings that I uh, showed you earlier. And they will be listed below, so you'll have all of it below listed. Uh, like I said, we're not going to use all of this, but uh, we'll break it down the recipe a little bit smaller so you won't have that much left over. Uh, a lot of the recipes that I've seen for tamales, it just has a ton of chili powder in it. Well, if you put too much chili powder in something, it can become bitter. This is paprika. Paprika uh, is ground pepper, so you're adding more a lot of flavor by using paprika. And you don't want to forget your uh, black pepper and your garlic. Uh, all those things are what make it up. Since we are canning them, I would normally add a little bit of cumin, but since we're canning these, I don't care for how cumin tastes when you put it in the pressure cooker. So if you want a little cumin, you can add it later or if you're just going to make tamales and not can them you can add you know uh, some cumin in with this mix we're going to put teaspoon two teaspoons of our mixture that we made up in our meat to start with like i said you're going to be able to taste this and see what it needs but actually we didn't have to add any more than two teaspoons to this mix because we're going to use a little bit of our masa seasoning mix we're also going to add some red pepper flakes a little bit further down the line uh, Red pepper flakes gives it a little bit of heat. We're going to add things like green chilies, onions, celery, bell pepper. I didn't add any extra garlic because we're using garlic powder. I didn't want to overpower it with garlic. 
but you, know, you really can't have enough onions with uh, Mexican food. Uh, this is our masa seasoning mix, and I just kind of sprinkled it to uh, partially cover the top of the ground meat and then mix it in. And all the water that I added to the meat, that's going to help to uh, get those seasonings working. When you get them a little bit wet, uh, it does start breaking them down a little bit to get those flavors mixed in well. We're going to start chopping up our bell peppers and onions. I had some frozen uh, celery, so we're going to use frozen celery. Just cut your bell peppers into strips and cut them up in small chunks. Uh, when you get to this white membrane in the pepper, uh, cut that out. Sometimes that can be bitter tasting, so don't cut up that white membrane uh, in your food. You can just take your knife easily when you get to it and, and remove it and discard it with your seeds. We cut this bell pepper in half and remove the seeds out of it. So we're going <clears> to... <throat> Excuse me, we're going to dice it up real small because we don't want large chunks of peppers in our tamales because the tamale is not that big and you don't want a big piece of a pepper chunk in the center of the tamale. Our meat's doing good. Like I said, we do want to brown it. Uh, browning it adds a lot of flavor. If you don't brown your meat, it's, gonna, it's not going to have as much flavor. We're going to go ahead and get our frozen bell pepper, I mean frozen celery in. Added about a half a cup of uh, celery. We used a large bell pepper and a medium size, uh, one of those sweet 1015 onions. They really were nice. They weren't so strong that they didn't kill me when I was cutting them up. I like the 1015s. They give a lot of flavor. Uh, years ago, they used to come around with big, huge bags of them. You could buy a big 50-pound bag for 25 bucks. They did them as fundraisers. But you don't see that anymore. We get a little bit more water in our meat. That way we can get these flavors combined. Because once we get all our veggies in, we're going to put the lid on and steam them because we want to cook our vegetables till they're done. As you can see, this steamed it pretty well and broke it down. Let's go ahead and get our onion in. We'll get that stirred up, put the lid back on, and let it cook until our onions are translucent. We want to make sure that uh, you don't leave any onion skins or anything that's going to be tough in it. So you know, be sure when you're cutting it up to try to pay attention. Don't do like me and leave a piece of the onion skin in your onions. Just kind of get it all mixed in with the meat. Uh, we're going to add a little bit more water to it so they can steam in the pot. This is going to help them break down and cook and get all those uh, different seasonings kind of mellowed together and working together. I really enjoyed this kettle. I actually got it on sale for like five bucks and it holds a quart and a half of water. It automatically cuts off. I mean, it is super nice. So you can fill it, flip it on, it'll turn on and come to a bowl and cut itself off. Okay, I'm starting with four cups of chicken broth for our masa. You don't want to just add water to the masa, add flavor. You know, use beef broth, chicken broth. This is three quarters of a stick of butter. We're going to get that in our masa and get that worked into it. So you get that melted, get that incorporated into your masa. Like I said, we started with four cups. This made 28 large, I'm talking very large tamales. I make mine as big as two fingers at least, maybe three fingers. So make sure you mix your butter in well to your masa. You want it evenly distributed throughout the masa. You don't want it to all be in one area because you're going to get a greasy tamale if you do that. Uh, a lot of the recipes call for lard. I just do not use lard anymore cooking at all. You know, you make pies with it, nothing. Just don't use lard at all. So our chicken broth was cold out of the refrigerator. I always put mine in the fridge so I can get all the fat off the top of it. So I warmed it in the microwave a little bit so it wouldn't go into this mixture cold. If it was cold, it would be stiffer than it normally would be. So you need to warm it up to, say, 85, 90 degrees at least. Even 100 would be fine. 
So you're adding it into the masa harina, then it's going to incorporate a little bit better into the masa if it's at least room temp or above. A little bit warm is good because it's going to help it actually absorb some of the water when it's a little bit warmer so you can tell what kind of consistency you get. What we're looking for is a, a batter consistency but a thick batter. So you want to when you're Take your spoon, this is a wooden spoon. You'll see in a minute I'll rake it kind of backwards. You want to be able to spread smoothly. You don't want it to be so hard that you're having to take and kind of press out the masa in the corn husk. Uh, also, you can use parchment paper. Cut them in six by six sheets. You can use parchment paper. But I think if you leave out the corn husk, then you're going to miss a lot of the flavor. Uh, my aunt, when she makes them, she'll put a corn husk down in the jar and then put her tamales in and parchment paper. It's all in what you want to do. See how when I'm raking this backwards that it smooths and stays stuck up on the side of the bowl, that it doesn't just fall back into the bowl? That's what you're looking for in consistency. So I use four cups of masa, four cups of chicken broth. Uh, so, oh, and I forgot to add my... Uh, pepper flakes, so we're going to get that into our meat. I want to show you that. Um, don't add all of your liquid into your masa. Do it gradually so you don't add too much. But if you get it too soft, add a little bit of the dry. Okay, we're going to add a thickener to our meat mixture. We want the meat mixture to be thick and kind of hold together. So I added a spoon of my masa. Added a little bit too much water. I think they ended up with a cup of water in here instead of a half a cup. So I'm going to add three more tablespoons of the dry masa mix, get that mixed up real well, and we're going to pour that into our meat mixture. And as it sits, it'll become thick and hold the meat mixture together. So when we're spinning it into the tamales, it kind of holds together and just doesn't fall apart. A lot of the recipes that you see will call for flour. I mean, why put flour? It's Mexican food. Use masa. Uh, masa is used a lot of times for thickened chili. This is a seven ounce can of chopped green chili. So again, we're adding more flavor into our meat mixture. So we've added hamburger meat, our seasonings. We've added onion, bell pepper, celery, and now we're adding a can of green chili. So you're gonna add juice and all. Don't ever pour the juice off because that's where a lot of the flavor is. So we're gonna get this mixture mixed up and we're going to let it sit to the side so it starts cooling down a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to show you how we make the tortillas. Uh, this is our, I've got our meat, our masa, and we took our tortillas out of our instant pot. We used the instant pot to keep them uh, pretty warm so we could get them uh, limber enough that we could fold up and make our tamales. So you're going to spread out a generous portion, about a quarter inch deep of the masa. Then we're going to put about two tablespoons of the meat. Like I said, I make mine large. Then you're going to fold it over from the left. Kind of take your hand and tuck it in. Roll it up. Fold the end in. And we're going to put it in our jar. What I do is I put it in the jar and where it's folded over, I use a butter knife to help push it down into the jar. These tamales are so big, I only got four tamales in a 24 ounce wide mouth jar. I'm going to make another one so I can show you how I got the last one in the jar. And generously spread out our masa, about a quarter inch thick. Got a couple of tablespoons of the meat. You may want to make yours smaller. Like I said, I make mine large. Two of these will fill you up. So it's probably equivalent to six or seven regular tamales. Fold it over, tuck it in, roll it up. And where you fold it up, you're going to use your knife and put it in the fold to help push it down into the jar. See how that works so easy? Then we'll put our lid and ring on, finger tight. And these guys are going to go in the pressure canner for 75 minutes. That's a cup. I did four so we could eat some. They really tasted good. And that's what they look like. Uh, they're really nice, big tamales. Uh, we ended up with six jars with four big tamales in each jar. Uh, they turned out really nice. They really tasted good. I've already eaten a couple of them, and they taste really good. 
Hope you enjoy this recipe. If you got any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you haven't joined our channel, do so by clicking on the little notifications, subscribe button with the notifications, so you get notified when we put any new videos out. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, we'll be glad to help you. This is the Fresh Prepper, and I'm out.